What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room, episode 12 of season six. This is the final match of the entire season, guys. And of course, uh, if you guys have been following the standings, you will know that my 4 4 timeout with Cooper last week means that I am mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. But um, even though at this point, in the season, a lot of people will choose to tank their season in order to get ideal uh, position in the next draft. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to play uh, a little more aggressive, a little more fun. I ran through a few sets, and uh, I'm going to share that with you this uh, this week in this, in this episode, the final episode of The Locker Room for this season. I want to say a few things before I get to the team. One... I tried so hard to bring Miss Magius this week. I have not brought her all season. It's it's a weird thing. I just every time I did calcs with her, I just, there's just something not quite there, and I didn't. I just ended up not really being able to find a way to ever fit her on the team. And I really tried this week, but she has such a horrible matchup against my opponent's team. My opponent uh, is already really leaning into the ghost and dark typing offensive presence especially given that my i have three psychics on my team now following some very poor trades in the middle of the season uh and i just i could not bring her but everything else i'm trying to be really fun on the left you'll see my 11 drafted pokemon i have entei latias cresselia zapdos nidoking mega absol granbull metagross Miss Magius, Ditto, and Regirock. On the right, you'll see my opponent's 11. He has Heatran, Gengar, Sandslash, Electivire, Slowbro, Mega Pinsir, Mien Xiao, Honchkrow, Meloetta, Sawsbuck, and Venusaur. I have organized them in a way of... From top to bottom, I, I would say most likely to bring to least likely to bring... Not necessarily that the top six are the six I think he will bring, but that uh, I think they have, they are the Pokemon with the most, the greatest likelihood to be brought. Um, so I've kind of prepared accordingly. Uh, the third row is a lot of threats, and it's interesting because there's a good chance he brings any of them, but I really don't see how he could bring all of them because they are all kind of answered in the same way which is something a little bit faster or something that can survive them, turns around and O-codes them. Uh, with the exception of Meloetta, who kind of won in the game last time we played. Uh, spoilers if you haven't watched week 5 of the GBA, I lose to the Saws Bucks um, in, a, in what I would learn it was a team so perfectly designed to counter Ditto that Ditto really did nothing that entire week uh, and uh, he ended up taking advantage by setting up subs against a lot of my uh, of my Pokemon. So that will not be happening this week. Let's go over the team that I brought. I have Zap Zap the Zapdos, Prince the Nitto King, the Red One the Latias, Dwayne the Reggie Rock Johnson, absolutely the Mega Absol, and Decisions the Entei. Uh, some of these are very similar sets to what I brought last time I played against him, but a lot of the team has been changed around. So, let's go over what I've done and why. Zap Zap is once again running a defensive set, but last time I brought him, he ran a specially defensive set to counter the Gengar. Um, so, this week I'm running Volt Switch, Hidden Power Ground, Defog, and Roost. So, I still want the Defog uh, to get rocks off my side of the field. I can switch in very well to the Sand Slash with this set, because even if he's running pretty offensive with Stone Edge. He can't two hit KO Zap Zap, uh, even after Stealth Rocks damage, I believe. So I can feel free to switch in against the Sand Slash. Even if he predicts the Zap Zap to come in, I can get a Defog off. I can Roost against him. Obviously, if he chooses to Earthquake, that might be a problem, but I I'm really not foreseeing that happening. I wanted to bring Zap Zap as defensive this week because after he didn't bring Mega Pinsir last week and after I know he's gotten better at using Mega Pinsir, I think it's more likely that he brings Mega Pinsir this time around and I really want to keep Zap Zap around. If he doesn't bring Mega Pinsir, Zap Zap's going to be a very frequent switch in for me, uh, trying to get a lot of momentum with Volt Switch, trying to punish with Hidden Power Ground. 
and uh, trying to be a mid-game Pokemon for me instead of holding on to him until I see the Mega Pinsir and trying to take advantage of that. Uh, I considered things like Toxic on him to make him a little better against the Sand Slash, but I think I'm okay with just defogging anything he's got, Hidden Power Grounding, and just using that uh, Pokemon as an opportunity to keep Zap Zap healthy. We've got Prince. He is very similar to the last set, except that instead of Stealth Rock, he's bringing Toxic Spikes this time. Now, he's got two Flying types, and a Levitator, and a Steel type. So four of his 11... I'm sorry... And he's got a Mega Venusaur, who is a Poison type. So five of his 11 Mon are not affected by Toxic Spikes. However, Pinsir is affected by them before he Mega Evolves. And usually, once Pinsir comes in, he rarely leaves. Um, he kind of he comes in for game a lot of the time. That's kind of how he's played. He's not great at frequent switch-ins. He needs to kind of revenge a lot. He can do it that way, but I think there will be an opportunity to get him Toxic Spiked by that. I don't predict the Venusaur. Uh, I don't think it matches up well against my team. Absol will beat it 1v1. Decisions will beat it 1v1. The red one is not scared of it. Even Prince doesn't really fear it. Uh, he's He does not have a good matchup. I don't foresee him bringing it. It doesn't mean he can't. I've been surprised in the past by people's brings because they, they can have a niche. You can have a place on the team, but I don't foresee him bringing it. The Honchkrow, yeah, it won't get toxic, but I, I don't really think that's a big deal. And it's okay with me that I don't toxic the Gengar or the Heatran, uh, but they can't remove them remove the toxic spikes so and even if his rapid spinner comes in to get rid of the toxic spikes he will get poisoned in the process so i'm okay with that he's running earth power ice beam and shadow ball as his coverage moves earth power will uh basically be a very strong stab that i can use to get anything else and the ice beam and the shadow ball coverage are great for everything else anything that resists the ice beam yeah, there's nothing... How do I say this? There's nothing that is that resists both of my coverage move and my stab. So if it resists my stab, I have a coverage for it. If it doesn't resist my stab, I'm going to hit it with my stab. Simple as that. Uh, he is Choice Scarf this week to help me net a few important kills against things like the, the Gengar, who is pretty fast and could cause me a bit of problems. The red one is coming this week with a Dragon Fang held item and an offensive set with max special attack, max speed, timid. Uh, no, I'm sorry, hasty. Uh, running Dragon Pulse, Earthquake, Calm Mind, and Roost. A very interesting set, I know. He has one Pokemon that resists Dragon, uh, and that's Heatran, who is quad weak to Earthquake. He might think Heatran is a good switch into the red one. And he would be wrong, kind of, <laughs> because uh, after a Dragon Pulse, I can usually kill him with an Earthquake. It's not 100%, it kind of depends on his investment. Uh, a lot of factors kind of lead into that, but effectively, I'm using the red one as a switch into Heatran and kind of a bait Heatran in, who thinks he can resist my stab and then take advantage of that. Thing is, he knows that I'll have some kind of coverage for him, and he might try and scout for that. Uh, he might scout to see if I have Surf. He might scout to see... He may. He might know I have Earthquake. But I've done my research, and uh, thanks to my front office, I have realized that through careful and meticulous looking through things, Heatran actually learns Dark Pulse. So... Uh, he does have something that can hit Latias super effectively. However, he shouldn't be able to two-hit KO me with that. And he won't outspeed me unless he's Scarfed. So, and if he if he can two-hit KO me, it would have to be a spec set, which means I will outspeed him, which means I can roost. It's not a great idea to roost stall him or roost, spam roost like that, but I will know. I'll be able to kind of make my play accordingly, uh, knowing that I outspeed him like that. And I'll be able to do calc assessments to see how much damage he's putting out etc. Uh, Roost and Calm Mind. The Calm Mind is because with one Calm Mind, I one-hit KO with Dragon Fanged, Power Boosted, Dragon Pulse. 
a good amount of his team. One Calm Mind will mean that I can very easily survive a Life Orb Shatter Ball from the Gengar. I might be able to do that anyway, even without the Calm Mind. Kind of depends on the set and his held item. But it it also allowed me to Oko him back, so that's, uh, that's really good. The Earthquake really just there for the... I mean, you know what? <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I could check and see whether or not Surf would be a better move. Because it would mean that he can't switch in on the Earthquake with Impunity. and it might, I'll look into that later, but for now I'm leaving it as Earthquake. I'll do a calc after this video is over. Should have calced it before, but I, I didn't. So, uh, let's keep moving. Dwayne is here. Dwayne is interesting. Uh, I Dwayne is my sixth mon. I could not decide what to do as my sixth mon. I tried Miss Magius, guys. I really honestly did. She was not pulling her weight. I tried so many times. I couldn't find a situation to get her in where she would actually punish something. I don't know what to do. What I'm going for with Dwayne is Rock Slide, Explosion, Stealth Rock, Rock Polish. Uh, holding a weakness policy, max attack, enough speed that after a Rock Polish, I outspeed a Jolly Max Speed Pincer. And okay, so I didn't want to be walled by Gengar, so I ran Rock Slide because Earthquake Explosion's not great. Um. <laughs> I don't really think that he would switch in a Heatran against me because it's so obvious that I could have Earthquake. The Rock Slide Explosion combo is just really fun to think about and I'm hoping that there will be an opportunity for me to get Stealth Rock up some point in the mid game kind of following through on that and just take something out with the Explosion. That's what I'm hoping for with Dwayne. He's a backup answer to Mega Pinsir except that after Mega Pinsir gets a Swords Dance off he will be able to beat me with um he will be able to beat me with close combat so Dwayne's not really an amazing answer for the for the mega pincer truly it is effective at switching into his stab which is always nice and it'll help me to kind of know scout out what he's got because if I can switch in on him take a flying stab really easily and he switches out I know he doesn't have close combat that means he could be packing swords dance uh, a priority move there maybe sub it, there's a lot of things I, I played with mega pincer last season I know he gets four move slot syndrome if he wants coverage for everything on my team then he's not gonna have a boosting move and that's gonna mean that he's pretty easily revengeable so I have to play around it like that absolutely the mega absol is coming back uh, knock off, Sucker Punch, Rock Slide, Protect. I had a couple more coverage moves on him last time I brought him against the Saws Bucks. The reason I'm not doing that this time around is there's very little reason for me to ever click anything other than Knock Off. Uh, the Haunch Crow, of course, resists it, but does, is uh, hit super effectively by the coverage of Rock Slide. Uh, the Mian Shao resists both of these typings, which is probably why I brought it last time, but I don't really want to risk keeping in Absol against Mian Xiao, given that last time I played against this man, uh, Mian Xiao was scarfed, and so it wouldn't be safe for Absol to be in against him anyway. Uh, Decisions is my last bring here. Decisions is once again scarfed. Uh, Sacred Fire Extreme Speed, Stone Edge Bulldoze. I I'm having a hard time with the decision sets against him this week. Decision's effectiveness is largely dependent on what he brings. Decision's forces a lot of mandatory uh, play styles on my opponent's part, and that's a big reason why I bring him. Now, having Pokemon on your roster can force a lot of those moves. Like, I know for a fact he's going to be bringing Toxic on some things just to try and deal with Cresselia, or maybe he's bringing a lot of... Uh, a lot of subsets again, again to take advantage of Cresselia. I'm not bringing Cresselia this week because Cresselia has um, been a bit of a bane the last couple of weeks because of how obvious she is to play around and how many people are prepared for her. And this week I want to take advantage of him attempting to do that by bringing a little bit more offense. So I need decisions to be able to influence the course of things. Having extreme speed is very useful against something like say if a haunch crow gets up a moxie or two, it's gonna be really useful to have the extreme speed to kind of help pick him off there. 
Uh, the Sacred Fire is great at burning potential switch ins to decisions, including the. Uh, it would be great to burn the Sand Slash. It honestly would. It's a little bit of a risky move because he does have the Heatran. However, I don't really mind if I give it a Flash Fire because I do also have the red one. And I don't think his first switch into decisions would be the Heatran anyway, but I'll have to kind of scout that out. Being Scarfed means I do outspeed his Mega Pinsir. Uh, that would help to be able to get a Sacred Fire burn off on it. He does not to hit KO me with priority, so he will have to go for a full power attack in order to try and take advantage of that. Uh, Stone Edge will hit him super effective. It'll also hit the Haunch Crow super effective. It's the strongest move I have for the Slow Bro. And Bulldoze is to, in case I am able to predict it right, uh, get a su four times super effective hit off on the Heatran. So that's my team this week, guys. And we're going to be going up against each other in any minute now. I'm going to message him on Discord and see what's going on. So what do you guys think? Leave a message down below if there's anything you wish you would have seen. I know a lot of you are going to say Miss Magus. I'm sorry, guys. I couldn't. I, I tried with Miss Magus. It just, it just didn't do it for me. Prince has better coverage. He hits harder. Yeah, he's not quite as bulky or as fast, but I, I just, I couldn't. Every time I tried putting him on a team, she just underperformed, also in practices. But anything else maybe you guys would have liked to see? Maybe Ditto one last time. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.